Okay, so what we're doing here is we're playing this neat little game I found on Steam. Doing a little reset, don't worry, it's just YouTube voice, Dave. Uh, <laughs> and this game, it's, it looks like um, it's an anime horror-esque game that apparently is supposed to like delve into the everyday horrors that are doing mundane things, like buying a bag of buying some milk. So let's get to work. Also, I might need to turn down the audio at some point. Yeah, like right now, actually. There we go. Okay. Oh, thank you, actually. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Um. All right. Help me buy milk. Uh, okay. Write down your name. My name, Dave. <laughs> walk down the road to the store and rehearse my speech. It's been so long since I've been out of the house that I completely forgot what words to say when entering a store. Also, it, this is also still very loud. One moment. Okay, there we go. I'm going to the store! Shut up and go already. What? What? Literally me. Who, who are you talking to? I'm imagining as if I was a character in a game, but if it helps me gather my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Are we going to play the silent game? Okay. Take a deep breath of air. Hello, can I? Crap, I forgot. 19th attempt, and I'm failing already. I bite my lip in frustration. So once again. Hello, can I get... Wow, that's a whole word more. <laughs> Thank you, I'm trying my best. I think this time, uh, the I sound was longer than usual. Do you think that's it? Who knows? Hello, can I? Uh, I wish I hadn't said anything. Don't worry. Okay. By the way, you've uh, been walking with your left foot on the pavement and your right foot on the grass for a full minute now. What? My right foot is frozen in the air. How how much? 50 steps on the pavement, 51 on, in the grass. Why am I noticing these things? You have to undo the previous step. <laughs> how, how do you imagine that? It's not the first time this has happened. You've been taught the right way, haven't you? Come on. You're so stupid. Jesus. What is this? I, I don't remember. Somebody, I'm it's their internal dialogue, I guess. I'm ready to burst into tears. Uh, here we go again. So, step one take a step back to get your foot exactly in your own footprint. Wait a minute. What do you mean, step one? What then? But it's already the 52nd. Or oh, wait, I'm going backwards, so that's the 50th? It doesn't add up. Okay, okay. Step 50 take a step back to get your foot exactly in your own footprint. Could you rephrase it just a little bit? You can't just repeat a phrase without changing at least one word. People don't like that. Talk like that. You're hopeless. You make it sound like it's my fault. The store closes in an hour, so you'll be you'll be very very guilty if you don't buy milk. Damn, really? Well, are you ready? Hell yes! I carefully move my foot backward, looking carefully into the dense grass. As I enter the store, this is the store. As I enter the store, I turn to the first person I see. Hello, can I? Hi. Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Am I supposed to click something else? What's this game? It's, uh... It's milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. Oh. Shouldn't have done that. He's obviously not going to change his lines. You can run the risk of ending up in an endless loop. Excuse me, what? What? What am I supposed to be doing? Excuse me, what? 
The text got smaller. What? Oh, what? Oh. What is he trying to tell you? He's trying to scare me. But how does he know that I'm terrified by the letter O? What's so scary about it? I have a frightening image of when I, w I picture it in my head. I can show you. Explaining won't be enough. But keep in mind that it'll cost me a... Guys, I don't think I like the letter O. <laughs> so I'll just continue to ignore his question. What? Oh. What? Oh. What? Oh. What? Oh. I gather all my will into a fist. Oh. Oh. I got an achievement. Oh. My interlocutor shook and crawled away. Just repeated after him. And it worked. Do it more often. Wait, I said he crawled away. Did, did he really crawl away? I mean, I didn't even look in his direction. What exactly? Why? When exactly did you say that? Just now. Firstly, I didn't hear it. You're just trying to distract me. But I know that my words were shown on the screen. Standing by the shelves on the rack, there are bags of milk. We both stand and the milk lies, or maybe... Hey, hey, slow down. Do you even remember why you're here? To buy milk. So buy it. Right here? What do you expect me to say? Um, I guess something like, not here? Not here. Take the bag to the cash register. I guess the first sentence! And you, as if out of spite, didn't pause before the second one. <laughs> you want to rob me of my little victories? I sigh and reach out to take the milk, or rather, the bag with the milk inside. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside. Come on, come on! 15 minutes before the store closes, hurry up! I remembered what these games are called. Visual novels! By the way, the numbers are written there uh, in full with letters. Visual novels. Worse than books, but they're, <laughs> uh, the authors are not lazy, so don't get lazy either. Wait, I thought only your thoughts were visible on the screen. Not anymore, so watch your mouth. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, uh, you heard me. Hurry up and you'll, or, or you'll never get, or you'll get it at home again. Wait, what? Hurry up or you'll, or you'll get it at home again. I'm on my way. Hello, can, can I get some milk, please? Hi. You have it. Ah, uh, give. I put a weighty bag on the register. Of course, it's not just bag, but the milk, too. Hi, can I... Can I have it, please? No. Please? No. But please, Ma Mom will throw me out of the window if I get back without milk. No. But why not? Give more. I don't have anything else. Hey. What? Pay for the milk. <laughs> really, what would I do without you? I take a crumpled bill out of my pocket and hand it to the cashier. He starts to carefully examine it. Took about two days before he nodded contentedly and put it in the cash register. Thank you, goodbye. I walked in a familiar street past a gas station. A bag of milk unpleasantly tugs at my hand, reminding me of the days when I was in physical therapy. By the way, they gave me a bag at the checkout, so now I'm carrying a bag of milk inside another bag. Don't think anything of it, I just love the pyramidal, <laughs> the pyramidal structure of verbal con constructions. Gas station is getting closer. How are you feeling? Thank you for your interest. I, I feel like a, a mile long bar of ice cream. What is that supposed to mean? As if I tell you. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. Just a weirdo. I'm sharing with you and you. Feel movement under my feet. Asphalt grains, pet petrol stains. I'm trying to keep my balance, and how do people move over something as uneven as the city plane? 
gently heel toe, I count my mind every meter of the path I walk. I even close my eyes for more concentration. Hey, watch out! Ah! I unconsciously take a sharp step to the side. At the same moment, a huge bear rushes past me with a wild screech. Hey, I'm walking here! <laughs> Cast a reproachful glance at the swiftly departing giant. Its red eyes in turn look at me with mockery. Did you see that? How brazen. It was a truck. Oh, really? Although if you think about it, are there bears with eyes on the back of their heads? It could have died. Come on, are you saying someone would seriously want to kill an innocent girl carrying a bag of milk? The world is a cruel and sick place. I'm not in the world you're talking about. Clearly not. Maybe we can cross the street, I guess. My journey continues. If you think about it, the road from the store has one interesting property. It adjusts to me in the most bizarre ways. When I'm in a hurry, all the traffic lights turn off helpfully. When I feel like crying, a cloud appears over me and pours rain streams that hide my tears. Right now I can feel a cloud slowly gathering over the top of my head. I'm sad. Are you sure this is really happening? What else could it be? Does it ever occur to you that it's all just in your head? It's not what the manual said at all. Apparently these pills don't work for me either. Please, I just want to get back home and go to bed. I really, really am very grateful to you, but please, no more. You know what? What? Since I'm a character in a visual novel, I want to talk to whoever's reading this right now. Oh, they're talking to me! And you! Uh... You say so. I forcefully squeeze my head with a, my hands and place a thought block. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a small bench, the perfect place for cliched visual novel monologues. I move closer and place a noticeably weighted bag of milk next to it and raise my head to the sky. Listen, I'm a little embarrassed, huh? I realize that I'm going crazy. The medications are becoming less and less effective, so... Ultimately, things will happen painlessly, I hope. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um... Not really. I'll be honest with you, and I expect the same from you, please. You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. Well, I'm not really surprised. I must be nothing like the model protagonist at all, huh? To be honest, I haven't read many visual novels. Sometimes I regret it because now it costs me a lot of effort just to distinguish between letters and words. By the way, if you don't mind, I'd rather not name my diagnosis. Let at least you be the one who sees me for who I am. Even though I made you up, don't take that away from me, okay? Don't ask me for too much. How stupid does this all seem? From the very beginning, you've been following me, reading my delusional thoughts, hearing my silly conversations. I must seem crazy and weird to you. <laughs> what is it like to see the world through my eyes? Ever since <laughs> something happened, all I see is red. Red blood everywhere. No, don't worry about me. I got used to it a long time ago. Admittedly, I'd even forgotten what other colors look like. Come on, huh? Those monsters from the store? They didn't scare me at all. After all, I know they won't hurt me. Sometimes I think that they themselves are afraid of me. Can you imagine that? By the way, if you want to ask what happened, please don't. Promise? Sure. I'm serious. Of course you couldn't help but ask. In the end, I'm just talking to myself. Sooner or later, I would have brought it up. Is it really that interesting what happened to me? I didn't ask. <laughs> I said I promise. I won't waste time. What do you see? Um, I don't see anything myself. Can you guys make out anything? I, I, don't, I can't tell what this is. I don't know. Nothing?
Anyway, this is my dad. I... Sure. Some of his parts, at least. Oh. We do have a very difficult family. But despite all the problems, I never would have thought. Sorry, I shouldn't have raised my voice. Anyway, he jumped out the window and died. Oh, wow. Jesus. This is my last memory. Then a long gap. Strange. Very strange. Today's the first time I've ever been able to buy something in a store without a major incident. Of course, the medicine helped me. However, I think it's more your merit. I kept thinking, we mustn't screw up in front of the reader. <laughs> or, oh my god, what will he think? Haha. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to become a visual novel character for the sake of going to the store today, but it clearly paid off. Thank you. By the way, it seems to me that there are some boundaries in our communication. That's how I like it, haha. <laughs> oh, they took the borders off of the... <laughs> Did you see that? They took the borders away from the visual novel thing. And yet I've been so sad lately. I've been thinking more and more about what my life has become ever since my dad. Well, you know. Day after day, it's the same thing. I've tried so many medications that I hardly feel any difference between them anymore. As long as they help me on my feet, I'm happy. <laughs> PP? PP. But you know what? Today's a special day. Because I have you. There's so much I want to tell you. You can't even... That was very rude of you. Oh no. I'm not going to pressure you. I'm just advising you to go home. I understand. Well, dear reader, shall we go? When I get to my floor, I hang over the railing. Repeating this action every day like a ritual, I stop being afraid of heights altogether. Keep you with sadness? True. A few minutes ago, the effects of the medicine finally wore off, so I just enjoy the blissful silence. When I'm under the influence of drugs, terrible and unpleasant melodies sound in my head, mixing with the sounds of the world around me. They create a terrible dissonance in my head. I turn around and go to my apartment. Maybe with anger, oh I see. What's with the anger? I'm guessing this is the door to our apartment? Hi! Hey mom? Did you bring... the milk? Hi, Mom. Did you bring the milk? Yes, Mom. Did your new medicine help? Yes, Mom. Go to bed. Yes, Mom. Milk bot. Hey! We, we bought milk, guys. We did it. Um. My mama tripping? It's my mama that's tripping. We're tripping. All right, so we're following right up with Milk Outside of a Bag of Milk, Outside of a Bag of Milk, the sequel to Milk Inside of a Bag of Milk. This is what happened last time. When we went to shop for the milk, this is what it actually looks like. Compared to like what we saw. Or more of a carton than a bag, you know. Is this the O guy? Here's the money. Oh can I Oh boy. Oh, boy. When we went home, gave milk to mom. It won't take much time. What do you see? Oh! This is when 
This is when she was, uh, like, talking to us about her dad. Anyway, it's... Okay. Then we got home to the apartment. Well, let's get started. Um, yeah. New game. It's like a bunch of eyes opening up. Oh, okay. I'm walking to my room, trying not to look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls and the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me and touches my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. Okay. I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. <laughs> That's so silly. I'm absolutely sure we have no cor corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure of that. I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers, but then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door now. If there's somebody inside, I'm surely, uh, I'll surely scare them to death, but wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, 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 I, I don't want to do that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thoughts when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside, but there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably is doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on a table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk towards my room through a narrow corridor. Mom? I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. It looks at me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. Sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again. I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. The creature s squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all pain. I've promised so many times. I've promised so many times. Stay put. The moment that its claw pierces my arm, I don't feel anything other than barely discernible crawling under my skin in the ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, the claw injects its venom into me. Is this her mother, like, giving her a shot? I think that's what's going on here. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor, just like last time. But, why, why do I feel so hot? This is insane. Yeah. I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body. Because this is the mother's face from the first game, so if the monster's injecting her with venom, I'm guessing that's her giving her a shot. Um, <laughs> while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from the pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam 
The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me, kill me! Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint it where every drop fell in my memory so I could gather them all later. I need to remember. I need... A new wave of pain flashes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. I... Say it. Never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. Oh, hey, it's us. I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all the fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I lived anticipating the inevitable moment the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for mother moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. As if someone, somebody fished them out of my head, one after another, one after another, until nothing was left. Now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Now I have to a better look at it, to twirl between my fingers to chew on it. I'll do anything to stall for just a bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I can not I can discern, still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder, and the capsule pops. Sticky, but red liquid pours out. Filthy, filthy. The pills... The pill flies straight to the waste bin. I start uh, rigorously washing my hands. There's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. There were some letters printed on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. It's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides, and I find a reason not to swallow it. I vent my own medication instead, enjoying swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right away. Not to my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of some something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder who's going to be my conversation partner. It's me! Hey. Hey, long time no see! You know we're only supposed to meet once per day, right? Why does your voice sound so grim? Naturally, I've read the manual. Judging by the pictures, the overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Basically, nothing I can't handle myself. After all, now I know how to do it. You didn't reply. Are you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? Pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. That's not true. I need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, all right? I'll just stay silent until the medicine wears off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. 
Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. Hmm? I'm so energetic, I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. What made you so happy all of a sudden? And why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple of hours ago? I don't know what you mean. Whoa. Okay. Alright. Uh, I still don't understand. Whatever. Unlike you, I forgot. I won't forget that pathetic, snotty, snotty girl for a long time. Jesus. She just whines and whines all the time. Jesus. Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see. Yeah. I? Am I really that pathetic? Jesus Christ. Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Jesus! Hey, at least I tried. Wash your face, then we'll decide what to do with you. What the heck? I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery look on the walls are giving me. Trying not to drown in their giggling. But then me in the mirror also shows me with a creepy smile, bears her teeth at me. Shut my eyes. But that doesn't help. I w it wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I started counting my mind. Two squared, two by two squared, a squared squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structural cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better. And my head is splitting apart right now. Sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. It's never your fault. Fine, you can keep on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I... Don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Does it even matter? I think so. I mean, if you're dealing with, like, a, a voice in your head that's, like, trying to control you or something, like... Oh, this is so wild. Can I pause? Oh. Literally, oh. Game saves. Is it moving? It's moving! We're like going deeper into the O. Uh. What happens if I just wait? Is this like her eye? I'm not sure. We're almost there. Uh. <laughs> Milk. Jesus Christ. Alright, we went all the way to the center and nothing happened, so I'm just gonna give it a few more seconds and then we'll go back to the game. Alright, uh, yeah, I think it's important. Somehow I find it hard to believe. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but now I feel triple in force. It hurts so bad. You know what to do. 
Dejected, I reach out from the shelf with my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that kept floating up in my memory. And yet my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating travel down my esophagus, sc scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just didn't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air and catch it in my mouth. on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. Do you want to talk about it? No. I've had enough of talking. What do you want, then? I... I just want to lie down for a bit. Even if the ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Should we save here? Save game? What's the load game? Is there like a main menu? I don't know if there's a main menu. Can you stay silent, please? I need to get my thoughts in order. Ah, shit. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Guys, I didn't want to pick that. We're gonna, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back in. We're gonna reload. We're gonna reload. <gasps> I have a new item in my Steam. This game has cards? Are you kidding me? Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Come on, click through. It says save menu, but it just says save. There's no load option, which is kind of wild. I don't know what that means. There's a load game here. Continue. I'll stay silent. Carefully extract the thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on a ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my corkboard. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off of, with my hand, annoyed, and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. It's kind of cute. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts. The fireflies now start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just that moment doesn't come. The mocking sound of flapping wings coming from the ceiling makes me start to lose my patience. Enough, I hate you. I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. I start over. No way. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? Should it? No. If you're being honest, then maybe it shouldn't. A lot of people act like this. I don't know if that's true, but... I don't know. 
this girl's clearly not well, and we can't expect normal, like, average things of her, you know? Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone, if you have a reason for that. True. You did have a reason, didn't you? You'll surely get better, believe me. So now, start over. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Mm. You need to go to bed. No, you don't get it. If I'm thinking about something, I need to finish my thoughts, or else... Glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as well as a firefly to hide here. They could be anywhere. I suddenly hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please, tell me you'll help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while, while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know better than anyone. It's the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I... I roll up my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They're so itchy. Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. Did he bring milk? Did you drink milk? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, will my eyes stop itching? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, all my eyelashes one after another. If I tear out all of my eyelashes one after another. What have you done? I need to gather the glass, and then I need to have a bath, and then... Here, drink some milk. First death? I stand in the middle of my room, my mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Tell me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. And my thoughts are hiding from me. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll just have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no. If I even make the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I don't, and I won't. Alright then, so we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside of a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch. Yeah! My oh my. I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun! And what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make me even more interesting. This is so childish. I want to know what the best part is? You'll be the one doing it! Oh no. Oh yes! I start panicking as soon as I get a multiple choice situation. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. Very feeling that you're able to come in. Why not continue on that road? Um... Come on, don't be so boring. I was just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision, too. Let's begin already. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where should I hide if I was a tiny firefly? Oh, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowee. Wowee. <laughs>
Carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. Sorry, little guy. Time's come home now. There's a time to come home now. I didn't read that right. As if it was in order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. <laughs> it tickles. Come on down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. Your usual notebook page is glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you knew them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Of course it's not. Shaky broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing. It's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rustle re restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight, ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. Okay. Well done. Um, okay, what's this? A plant? Right, insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I guess. I get closer to this fl our shelf, and I sniff around. The, leaf the leaves <laughs> smell of dust and cardboard and death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, we kind of don't have a choice here, you know? Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Are you just listening to me at all? Not sure I get it. There's a clock. Um, like, is that a stereo? Great, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Jesus. There's two radios. Interesting. What's with the fan? Yeah? What's so funny about that? Imagine myself being a firefly. It is looking straight at a giant fan. And? I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage it's locked in. And the cable. It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's start- let's continue searching. Okay. Um... Let's check the trash can. I get close to the waste bin, look inside it curiously. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. Pills on the table. I look at the mound of pills. It makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Hey, calm down. You already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Things could have been much worse. Yeah. I have a deep sigh, come closer, and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it, along with them. A firefly, hooray! After circling my head a couple of times, it finally lands in my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder, it crawls straight into my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. Should we click on it? Here, let's save. See what happens.
Oh, it doesn't let me click on it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Turn my eyes toward an un inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it. And a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. Um, cabinet? I doubt it. All the compartments are locked. What if... I don't want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. Okay. Um, what's this? Oh, it's another radio. We have three radios in this room. Okay, the clock. Look at the alarm clock. Time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? Bet I am. I let out a theatric yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two, then I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. Take a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart. Thank you, Rain. Whatever. I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine. You have a clock right in front of you, though. I can't look at its hands for too long. First, I feel like they're starting to move in the wrong direction. Then they appear disappear altogether. Then things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? Oh my god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Oh my god. Huh? Forget it. Do you see the firefly? N no. Let's continue searching then. Yeah. Okay, let's not mess with clocks anymore. Um. What about the air conditioner? I look up toward a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. Oh well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We'd better look somewhere else. Why would cockroaches be in there? Have you forgotten? You were the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards. But cockroaches don't disappear just like that. So they occupied this place. Do you understand now? Uh, yeah. Okay. The light bulbs? Are you serious? What's wrong? Just think about it. Why would fireflies be attracted to light? I think they're quite self-sufficient already in that regard. Well, only if they'd purposely want to lower their self-esteem. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we could check the backpack. I look down. My school bag. Worn down and silly. It's almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool. <laughs> Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there, and I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? Do you think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. Alright, alright. What did you like most there? Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright, not like at home. That's it? Don't rush me, let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft, and the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in more memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tests were way too easy. Then we got into a car and went home. Mom created us there. We had dinner and went to our rooms. 
Uh... Then what happened? I don't remember. Does it even matter? Okay. Good. Look at my back again. Light pouring into the room through the window, glints off the metal parts. There's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever, I don't care anyway. I almost end up knocking the bag in a fit of anger, but I manage to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It has already happened countless times. What do you mean you'll go blind? I've spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I've seen them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see a small insect crawling towards me from my bag. It's barely glowing, and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts growing brightly as soon as I touch it, and then it flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies with me, uh, toward me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating it to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes around over a little while. This one's kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is it's no longer alone. Sure, let's continue searching. No, we're not done searching yet. We got the sleeping bag. <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure there's no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. You'd want to dig deep into it in a couple of favorite items, close your eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slapped my cheeks to assure myself to senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now I can't. Got gyre? Nice. Or gyre? Euro? Uh, let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside. Nah, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting themselves to sleep. Quite the contrary. They always cause insomnia, just like tonight. Okay. These are the notes on the wall. And what are those? Ah, those. Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're blank. I stare at them so intensely I burn them with my eyes. <laughs> now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. There's a book. This is my sketchbook. Half the pages are blank. Which means it'll be a good play it'll be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. You even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? No, oh, maybe you can ask your mom to buy you one. Buy what? Ask whom? Can you even form coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a notebook instead. Instead? So you want me to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of another? Then how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. I lack empathy. Is that my fault? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on a stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. Squat to look at it again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Uh, let's not go there, okay? Stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried in on the pre previous page the way it should be. Too bad. I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! Shut my eyes. The distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with a headache in my head. I don't know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped, even though the wind is still howling from every direction. It can only mean one thing. The page book is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look. If I wait a little longer. If I wait. Open your eyes. No. It's okay. Just do it. No way. I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. Calm down. Fine. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open to the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know, did you? 
There's a smart one here. You tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. Why did you... I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it. I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look. Look there. Barely light, uh, visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly! The wind immediately stops for a moment. The world sinks into perfect silence, but only for a moment. Buzz the buzz that has always been haunting me fills my surroundings, but it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy, he made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up, and, and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spends some time looking for a perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing dies down. Phew. Are you okay? Running short on time, so let's continue searching. Well, we found another firefly, even though we were done searching. So maybe we should keep searching. There's a mouse hole in the wall here. Check the umbrella. The umbrella emanates a faint sense of coolness. No wonder it's the only thing that defends me against the thunderclouds that gather under my ceiling. It's such a blessing that I could do it without my help. Still, firefly won't hide in a place like that. Catch cold and be unable to fly. You don't want to check it? Why? I'm sure we won't find anything there. Alright. Just checking. Um, what about the cabinet? Tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling at least 300 feet above the floor. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at all. Like, totally. And I'm to definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidge of the littlest bit. Not even a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Hey, I'm not done telling you how much I don't care. <laughs> From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh, no, you don't. Then act normal. It's not easy to get out of here. <laughs> Oh, did she sneak out through there? That's interesting. Is there anything else for us to find? Just the radio. No, the computer. We never touched the computer. I look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. A bizarre item. I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Hmm. I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably brought it in here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent my whole days in front of the screen, games, drawing, engineering, calculator, 3D modeling. So much fun stuff to do. You have amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did, before entering the web. Hmm? Imagine this. Your hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Could you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagine. Alright, so your hamster lives underground. You have everything co for comfortable living, okay? Okay. Wonderful. Here's the situation. Your hamster that lives. Okay, I got it. Do you want to do a talk about something else? Yeah. You'll end up returning to that subject anyway. On one wonderful day, someone digs you up from your hamster house and brings you to the pest door. Now your new home is a cage. It's way more comfortable and warm compared to the underground. And the most important part, you have a lot of neighbors here. Their cages are identical to yours, and the other hamsters look identical to you too. That means that you're all the same. Apart from the fact they were born at that shop. You'll ask, what does that indicate? I'll tell you, <laughs> nothing at all. I forgot what I was talking about. Gosh. Okay, let's start over. This time, try avoiding the hamster analogies. No, I'm not at fault here. So... I had a lot of friends online, tens, hundreds of them, impossible to count. Is it impossible, though? I had exactly 317 of them. Although I guess nobody counts the exact number of hamsters when they walk into a pet shop. Hey, don't get distracted. Oh, right. For my 317 friends, 68 went into gaming, just like me. 130 of them like drawing, just like me. 
The remaining 119 were into calculators and 3D modeling equally. When I say equally, I don't mean 59 and a half friends on each side. All right? You split the numbers evenly, no problem. But math doesn't work like that when it comes to friends. A major conundrum, right? Get to the point. I knew them, of course. That no real people existed on the web. I also understood that all my friends die the moment I turn off my laptop. But I still wasn't even a bit worried. Why? Do you know what computer programs consist of? It's just a combination of numbers. Which means my friends are also numbers. Isn't that amusing? Not really. Why do you call them your friends? I mean, everyone who shares my interests is my friend. And I don't care whether they know about my existence or not. Anyways, as I was saying, every program has its own algorithm and purpose. It's mathematical formula. And if you solve that formula, you'll be able to predict the program's behavior at any moment. The longer you speak, the less I follow. You don't need to follow me around. Just listen. I sit on the floor and the laptop screen ends up right in front of me. The only thing reflecting it is my dim face. A web person is just a random picture and a random string of letters. Words and actions from the web person are just executable code. Hey. Let me, let me know if you need a break. One day, someone appeared. From that point on, my laptop was always on. There are no real people on the web, but he was good at pretending. At some moment, I let him trick me. Hey, look. Huh? Suddenly, a firefly starts crawling out from the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on the top of my palm, blinking all the while. How's that so Outside is, like... Okay, inside was, a like... They're both accomplishing the same goal. There's definitely more to this game. I don't know if there's $9 worth of this game happening, but there's certainly more than 50 cents happening. I think it's trying to say something. I can see that myself. If only I knew what... Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. Then it starts glowing again, as if coming back to its senses. For some time, it thinks about the further course of its actions, then flies up and dashes in my ear. Let's continue searching. What about your story? You must be mad at me for interrupting you. I'm sorry. If you do everything right, I'll finish my story. Maybe. Do you promise? I promise. And if you forget, then remind me. With the code word, for example. I got an achievement that says, please forget it, because I won't. Okay. What kind of code word? I'll think of one later. <laughs> for now, let's keep searching for my fireflies. Okay. I don't think there's anything else for us to interact with other than, like, radios. Hmm. Yeah, I think that might be it. I'm mashing click on this in case it does anything. Hmm. Didn't really do anything. Oh, we've pretty much covered everything else then. I think we're done searching. You found all the fireflies. Amazing. I guess. I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going to... It's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all. Zero sum. Happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony. Breathe some air. Somehow those words trigger a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but... I feel like someone is watching me. Alright, let's stay here, then. Yeah. What are you gonna do? <laughs> What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside my mortal shell, but at the same time, still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside of a bag of milk. And yet... And yet... You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. Won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow? And never ever. 
then that's a goodbye then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What's that? I flirted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine, what's the favor? I am... Um, nervously scratch my wrists and bite my lower lip. Wait a minute, you're afraid to tell me? Yes! I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. Oh my god, this is so endearing. I'm so sad right now. Jesus Christ. <laughs> sleeping bag time. Crawling to my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because my, the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well anyway, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down, and started imagining that I was watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course. Uh, always looking sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? Just those there are competitive RR2 uh, matches. Wild. Oh, like, how fast they can get a run, or like, high score, I guess? I don't know. And one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of a room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me, hissing. It was horrible. And well-deserved, I guess? It felt like I was caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed there. I guess they liked this place. Speed. Upon death, you just had five minutes added to your timer. Oh, so you just, like, keep going and going and going until you get it. Okay, that's interesting. But today? Today. Well? I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course! They're still listening, you know. Use your hands. Alright. Start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh! I was trying so hard here. Don't you get it? They'll hear you! Max, nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to. But I have no idea how to tell them. It's incredibly easy. Multiple rounds of points for placement, extra points for... Uh, first, if they win by certain margins of time. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'd be interested in doing that with other people, but I'd have to get a lot better at the game. Just talk about something without sleeping. It sounds silly, but it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I just know enough to realize that we'll end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. I got an achievement called You Won't Get It. You're not even trying. Oh my god. <laughs> I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. You're late! Um, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You. Are. Late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. S sorry The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. Besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Cheska says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Oh, why don't you fool yourself? I'm serious. 
I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? It's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko. His face is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go. And I need to think. I'd be happy to. But I don't know what the way. Trishka puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you, though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't have enough time to retort. Lead the way. A trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. On the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the in the end, the trip took a little longer than it should. Okay, I, for those who may not have been paying attention earlier, this is mimicking exactly the first game. In the first game, we're the person accompanying them, and then at one point they have to take a step backwards because they're walking on the street and also in the grass or something. I don't know what that says. After reaching the store, uh, the store's doors, we were greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. This is exactly the plot of the first game. Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way? Oh, 20 minutes close or something like that? They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to the change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. <laughs> You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Uh, what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but a scary-looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass, holding a cardboard set that says we're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realized that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where where they sell milk. I, um... Maybe we should ask somebody for directions. Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresca lets go of my hand and walk confidently towards one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with their back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I? This is exactly, exactly to the T what she does in the first game. I can't uh, hear neither the second part of the question nor the reply he gets. But my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. I hurry towards him. This is when he started saying oh a bunch, right? Like, oh, oh, oh. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um... He's yours. Please get him away from me. Y yes, I'm sorry. Grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer's mouth ajar. His eyes popped. He's also shaking. This is when he kept seeing the O, which I wonder if we see the O right now. Oh, I can't I can't bring up the menu. I can't bring up the save menu. <laughs> Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I, I got so scared, he said. What? No, not again. Suddenly Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hands. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You, you don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Any, any annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. <laughs> Who, me? Triska pushes me away and runs off. Trat. At the end of my vision, I see the store staff hanging a new sign on the door. He's trying to buy some milk, I guess. There you are. I meet Tresca at the trash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you move. I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that is formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. What? You heard me. I, I did, but that's unheard of. Trisca starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is... Whoa! But, but... You heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote at the cashier of a much higher value than needed, even counting the in all the stupid fees. Then grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. 
This is wild. So she's like dreaming that she's us? Like watching over herself? And she like uh, snapped in a moment like that. And we told her that it's okay to snap earlier, so maybe that's something. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks the silence. Do you like ice cream? Because the roads are like an ice cream, she said. Oh my god. No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment, then goes out. You know. He turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway in determination. I stare at his back, confused. This is when she ran at, like, at the truck. We suddenly turn. There's the truck. It seems like you're not helping me at all. Ugh, that's what she said to us in the first game when we failed too many questions. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. And we wake up. Is she like realizing what? Oh, there's the O. Is she maybe realizing like what her behavior was like today? Or if it's normal or not? I don't know. What's up with this game, dude? Milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk. Good night. We got. She went to sleep. We're missing ten, six achievements. I. Okay. Um. Yeah, so that was wild. Uh. You know, it's crazy and kind of creepy, and it's like described as indie horror, but like really, this sometimes like makes me think of like people who do have to live with like schizophrenia. Uh, hundred percenting, maybe, maybe off stream I'll do it. I feel like that'll co like involve a lot of backtracking, um, because we still need six achievements. We only got four, but I have a buddy that's uh, that I met when I was like uh, going to college, and he, he took had to take meds for his schizophrenia, otherwise he would have like voices talking to him and stuff. So like, it's wild to think, and like so like his I'm I'm not sure how severe his was, but like it's wild to think that some people have to live like this and it's sad to think about and like sometimes being in the privileged position that i'm in where i don't have such a thing going on in my head i can forget how hard life is for other people and i don't know it's just always really comes back to the idea of like how you should be appreciative for what you do have and be understanding when things are different for others but that was wild and cool um Well then, uh, this game has Steam cards, by the way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hey, the game was actually pretty cool. Um, took me 65 minutes to play, and I was like voice acting the whole time. I think I am just going to hold on to the game. I thought about refunding it because it's like eight bucks for like a game that's quite that short. What is this one? Hi. What's it like to be a mother? Milk. This is some interesting Steam cards. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I, that was an interesting experience. Um, if you want to check it out, check it for yourself. Go ahead. I, it's not on sale right now. I don't know if this game will ever go on sale, but, uh, the first one's on sale for 50 cents. That's a pretty good deal. Seeing as how, uh, it's originally something. Sorry. My mind's getting really lost right now. This game just is taking it out of me. Anyway, uh, bye YouTube people.